What is going on, Movie Meals? Movie Meals, we're her, we're her, we're here early in the morning. <laughs> um, the Oscar nominations are out. One of my favorite videos to film at the beginning of the year. It's just, it's one of the best. So we're just going to quickly run through them. But before we get started, thank you to Movie Meal patrons, Kimberly and Karen. Go join the patronage. The podcast will be coming back, I promise. January is a tough month for, for me. I am very busy. Um, but I will be not. coming back. <laughs> Uh, so let's, uh, go get some merch. So I'll link down, down below in the description, but let's, let's get into it here. So I just pulled this up from the LA times. I think Kyle did as well. And uh, we'll just start at the bottom and we might skip a couple, might going to quickly go through some, but visual effects, your five nominees, all quiet on the Western front, avatar way of water, the Batman, black Panther, Wakanda forever and top gun Maverick. I think this makes a lot of sense. I love seeing the Batman in there. Avatar is going to win it. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front is a nice little nod there. So I, this this makes sense. Any thoughts? Um, mm. Yeah. Out of all the blockbusters that end up in visual effects, these are the ones that not only I like the most, but I think make the most sense for this category. I We will do a predictions video down the road, but yep. Avatar is probably the clear front runner, but I'm happy to see something like Top Gun Maverick, which you know, had visual effects involved, but also had a mixture of practical and blended the two together, in my opinion. So yeah, uh, well, nice every, every movie's too. got visual effects. I remember the late, great John Schnepp, RIP to the King, always talked about on the old Collider days that uh, a movie mm-hmm. like um, um, uh, Mad Max, everybody was like, practical, practical, practical. And he's like, you guys don't understand how movies are made. Like, if, yes, there's a lot of practicality here. It's awesome. But there's a ton of visual effects going into this. Anyway, let's get to writing original screenplay. We've got the Banshees of Inner Sheeran. Everything Everywhere All at Once, the Fableman's Tar and Triangle of Sadness. Um, I think all this makes sense. I, I love all these movies. I'm really glad that Everything Everywhere Got quite a few nominations throughout. Um, Triangle of Sadness. That's the. Oh, I'm trying to remember. That's the. I, I I've heard of the film. I want to watch it. I'll just say that. Any thoughts, Kyle? Uh, it's from it's from Neon Studios. Um, it's kind of similar to the menu that it pokes fun yeah. at, at, like the elite class, and they end up stranded on an island, I believe. Um, a movie that is on my watch list, though. But same. Uh, these four movies, I have been able to see. I like the scripts for most of them. I think Tar isn't a movie that I loved, but I liked it enough to where I could see why the Academy did put it in this category. And I think it's a good crop all around in general. Again, Triangle of Sadness just is on my watch list. Same here. For adapted screenplay, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. Uh, I haven't seen women talking. It's been high on my list for a while. It's a movie I really want to see. I love everybody involved. Um, Living's also been on my list. Just haven't gotten a chance to see it. I've seen the other three. I don't really understand why Glass Onion is here and not an original screenplay. It's based kind of off inspiration from Agatha Christie, but it is not an Agatha Christie adaptation by any sense of the meme. This is all ryan johnson here so i i'm a little bit confused why it's here and then i started to think to myself they put it here so they can give it the win uh so now i believe it's the front runner (laughs) um (laughs) because i i think they want to give it a win um and give maybe everything everywhere a win or banshees a win um in original but i'm glad it got a nomination because i think it got snubbed in some other spots but um yeah what do you think of course I peaked. I, think... I watched the last 20 minutes of the live stream. You ke- Do you oh, know who was... you're talking to around here? I was still <laughs> Come on. Good I'm aware. Um, I believe the answer to that question is that due to it being a sequel, that puts it in adaptive screenplay. So I think Knives Out... Because it's adapting from itself? Yeah, I believe that's the answer. That's um, dumb. Hey, Oscars, what can you do, right? Uh... But it's not surprising seeing it adapted um, in some other Oscar-related videos that I've seen of people tracking like nominees, possible nominees. Glass Onion was always involved in this category, so not too too surprising. Plus, it's also just a good movie, and I think it's very clever anyway. Um, Women Talking, I do like hearing or at least seeing that 
it's in this category because it seems pretty quiet in terms of it possibly getting any sort of nominations outside of this category. Maybe Best Picture, but we'll see. Um, again, just a movie that I haven't seen I myself, but it seemed to have not done well with trying to get traction for Oscar buzz anyway. So at least it did get something within this category. That's nice to see. So sound, we've got Top Gun Maverick, Elvis, The Batman, Avatar Way of Water, All Quiet on the Western Front. I'm really happy The Batman got in here because I think the sound and the sound design, you know, when they used to have it as two correct categories, um, is phenomenal. Um, Mm -hmm. So I, I like everything being here. I'm even okay with Elvis, which is a movie I don't think really truly deserves to get a lot of nominations. And I think this is a... Uh, a good spot for Elvis, but Top Gun Maverick and the Batman are are very, very good as well as All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, so any thoughts? Um, yeah, similar to visual effects. I think this list makes a lot of sense. And I'm starting to notice a trend when it comes to All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, Alex, I know that you really love this movie. It's in your top Loved 10. So it. between between this Loved and it. seeing it getting more and more technical nominations... I think this is getting bumped up to the top of my list of things to watch right now. So I can't wait for that. It's phenomenal. Um, mm. Production design, all quiet on the Western front. Avatar, the way of the water, Babylon, Elvis, the Fablemans. Again, everything here I love. I think they've all got great production. Um, Babylon's interesting. I never got to see Babylon, mainly because once I heard the buzz for the movie was not as good, it was like, okay, I can push this back on my list a little bit here, maybe wait a little bit. And, and again, I'm a busy guy, uh, but <laughs> I got an, an eight hour bus ride coming up soon. I'm going to be buy, renting, buying a few of these movies. I'm just going to be watching. Yeah. You kidding me? Uh, but yeah. anyway, Babylon's probably not one to watch on a bus full of teenagers, but we'll find some others. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, all these make sense to me. I think Top Gun Maverick though, had a, had a real, you know, might, might be a snub in this spot. I think it's production design was phenomenal. But any any thoughts from you? Uh, no, just a good list. We can keep going to the next category. Music, original score, All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and The Fablemans. This makes total sense to me. I think The Fablemans um, score sticks out probably the best, as well as All Quiet on the Western Front of the movies I've seen here. But again, Everything Everywhere All at Once is, is phenomenal from top to bottom. So I, I love it. Any thoughts? Uh, for me, what sticks out is Banshees of Inisherin, uh, and its score, because I did think it was um, beautiful and matched the movie quite well. Um, but again, also kind of nice to see Babylon get some of these technical awards, because I'm not sure it's going to get nominations anywhere else. So, there you go. Probably not. Um, for original song, we've got applause from Tell It Like a Woman. We've got Hold My Hand from Top Gun Maverick. I think Hold My Hand makes so much sense here. Uh, Lift Me Up from Black Panda Wakanda Forever. Not Too Not Too from R, 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 an absolute banger of the day. This is Life from Everything Everywhere All at Once. This is a tougher category than I think it actually should. I mean, you know, I think it. this is an <laughs> yeah. underrated in terms of toughness. I, I haven't yeah. heard listened to applause, but Hold My Hand is is phenomenal lift me up i mean rihanna's back how do you not have that in here not to not to might actually get a a small little you know like maybe it might might be right there to take the win here or this is life so this is uh, okay i've always said they should never perform the songs i'm pretty excited just to see everybody do a not to not to at the oscars just for that alone because rrr is phenomenal if you haven't checked it out you need to check it out Alex, it might be the one reason why I would watch the Oscars all the way through this year is to oh my make God, sure I see that again. performance live. <laughs> no, you watch so it on good. Twitter. It's so good. You'll uh, watch it on the Twitter one... and then you'll tell me how the production wasn't that good, even though you didn't really <laughs> watch the show and blah, blah, blah. Or the same yeah. thing continues. Sounds anyway, like keep me. going. Uh, the one thing I wanted to add is I wish there was a way to have the song from Pinocchio get in here. I would agree. But aside from that, this category is the one that I care about the most, but I do have a soft spot for Not To Not To, so awesome for them Same. to get that nomination. Really cool. There's really, like, I mean, I don't know, tell it like a woman, I'm, I'm looking it up right now, um, 
I don't even know if I know have heard of this, so I'm gonna have to put it on the old watch list. I haven't heard the song, but right now I would be happy with any of the other songs winning mm-hmm. because I just love sure. all of them so much. But all right, let's yeah. keep going here. Uh, makeup, hairstyling, all quiet on the Western Front, the Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, the Whale. I think this, all those make sense to me. I think the Whale and Elvis are actually front runners here, and this might be the only thing Elvis might potentially win. So I could mm. see it going here. What are your thoughts? Uh, I think it might be down to those two as we get closer to when the winners get announced. Um, but yeah, I, I think Elvis and the Whale did a good job, especially for their main leads to really sell the crux of their movies. So all in general, not a list I'm complaining about. So <clears throat> we can move on to the next category. I'm going to butcher this, but live action short film, the an Irish goodbye, Evalu Le Pupel. Night Ride and the Red Suitcase. I haven't seen any of these, but I always do my best to try to go see the short films because the usually my movie theater puts them out. You can go, you know, pay a ticket, go see them all. I've never gotten to do it. I've always wanted to. I'm always, I'm always putting a different Oscar movie that they're re-showing at the theaters on the higher on my list, and then I always miss it. But I'm gonna try really hard to go see it and just sit and enjoy an hour and a half or you know an hour of watching these movies. Um, mm-hmm. But international, you got any thoughts? Um, live action short film. Sorry, I I was spacing on my spot here on my screen. Uh, Red Suitcase, I think, is what I've heard the most buzz about, but I I just am not familiar with this category in general. But hey, it is always a way to convince people to go out and see different types of movies. So I'm here for that. I think that's really cool that they still shout out short films. So for international feature, we've got All Quiet on the Western Front, Argentina 1985, Close, EO, and The Quiet Girl. This is, to me, this is All Quiet on the Western Front's to lose. I don't know if it, if, um, you know, uh, if it gets nominated for Best Picture here, I don't know if it has the legs to pull uh, Parasite, but I think, I think it it's definitely going to win here. It's It's got nominated in almost every other category so far. We're through most of the big ones. So um, any thoughts? I was kind of expecting to see Decision to Leave, but maybe that didn't qualify somehow, yeah. or maybe I just didn't pay attention enough to where there was an Oscar buzz for it. Um, but yeah, I've heard obviously great things about All Quiet on the Western Front, so I think that could be the leader in the category. I've heard EO is a pretty impressive movie and a really sweet film. Um, Let's check it out. So maybe that could climb its <clears throat> way into getting more buzz somehow. But uh, other than that, I don't have much else to complain about this category, really. All so film good. editing, The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Tar and Top Gun Maverick, all these movies make sense. I think Everything Everywhere All at Once has the best editing of any of the films, so I think this will probably take it. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, editing for Everything Everywhere All at Once is really hinged on its story working as well as it does, so I think there's a very good reason why it would... Uh, be the leader in this category. Elvis is, you know, it's from um, Baz Luhrmann, of course, so you know that there's always that chaotic editing style, but (laughs) I do think it kind of works for Elvis. (laughs) Like, for when it comes to, like, most of his filmography. Top Gun Maverick also could be a sneaky one, too, um, just by how they crafted this movie so well with the shots of the plane and all the hard work that put into making all the the technical practical stuff possible so i don't know there's a lot of good ones in this category it's kind of hard to see right now who would really take it but it's a good list um for documentary um there's documentary short i haven't seen any of them but i would like to check them out and then documentary feature i haven't really been paying as much attention to documentary myself this year as i should be um but do any of those stick out of those two categories in your in your he- little head here? All I got for documentary feature is Fire of Love. Um, again, just pretty good. out of all these titles is the one I've heard the most about and have heard of great things. And I think <clears> that could just be the leader based off of that. But things could change. You know, I, I try to check them out. Months left. Yeah, we've got, got a, a, about a month and a half, maybe a little less. But I, I'm going to definitely check them out. But all right, here's uh, let's see. Let's uh, here's one of the major ones with directing. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So we have Todd Field for Tar, the Daniels for everything everywhere all at once, Martin McDonough for Banshees of Inner Sharon. We have Ruben um, Outslund, I believe is how you say it, for Triangle of Sadness, and Steven Spielberg. Um, interesting with Triangle of Sadness, immediately when a director snubs, or not snub, but a director sneaks in there, I'm immediately like, this movie's top of my list. I got to check this out if I didn't. I've heard about it again, but I need to check it out. I think the Daniels have a sneaky shot here. I think Martin McDonough's got a sneaky shot. I do not think Todd Field really has a chance to win, but I do think this is probably Stevens to lose. I think the Academy might be looking and saying how many more Oscar dominant movies does Steven have left? And they might want to honor him one more time before he pop. I mean, Steven's in great health. I'm not saying he he won't be back. I love Steven to death. He's my favorite director of all time, but I do could see the Academy going, you know, he hasn't been here since the post. That was a while ago. So, you know, he's got other projects. Yeah. Will he be back here? It's a movie about his life. This might be the best time to honor him one more time. So I, I do think it's Spielberg's category to lose, but I I think the Daniels have a real shot here. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, now that I'm seeing the nominations, I think what you're laying out makes a lot of sense in terms of why Steven could get the win here. And... While we do see McDonough and the Daniels in this directing category, I think one of those two, I mean, depending on Best Picture, I still haven't seen the list. I could see the Academy deciding one of those two get Best Picture while they give Steven that like legacy uh, Best Directing win or that you're describing. vice versa. We could also see, I think, that play the opposite mm, yeah. way, where they say, hey, yeah. you made an incredible movie, but we're going to give Best you know the best picture to steven i think it could go either way really but yeah <clears throat> that could be anything else um triangle of sadness i think it's been lower on people's lists in terms of getting a directing nomination but there's always that surprise when it comes to the directing category there's always one guy that um there always comes is. in and you're like oh okay that's a bit of a surprise <clears throat> Also, it, it, this is probably going to be a conversation afterwards that there's no women directors in this category. Um, I get it. There were some good movies from women directors I could have had a chance women to get in here for sure. Yeah, yeah, women talking, she said, woman Kane. Um, <sighs> she said was so good. Just didn't work so out this woman. time. I don't really know what much to say <clears throat> about it, but but when it comes to the movies, I think they were um, they have good reason to be in here. I would agree. For costume design next, we have Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Miss Harris Goes to Paris. Um, I actually think that this is going to be a Black Panther win. When I think of all these, all of these had really great costume designs, but the one that sticks out to me more than any of them is Black Panther and then Everything Everywhere All at Once, Um, especially when I think of some of the, like, funeral scenes in Black Panther. Um, So I, I think it... I would be happy with a few of these movies winning, but I do think Wakanda Forever is probably my choice here, but um, we'll see. Any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the costume designer for Black Panther, Ruthie Carter, I think there's, I think that easily could be a win for her, but um, Elvis and Babylon just have me wondering. Although, yeah, maybe Babylon wouldn't get this one. Maybe we'll go to like music or something else, so. Yeah, not sure Babylon yeah, will get a win. Going to Black Panther. I think Babylon Sorry, might. That? I think Babylon might. Their win was getting nominated for a few things, and is what I'm <laughs> slightly yeah, leaning towards here. But all right, for sure, cinematography, sure. All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, False Chronicle uh, of a Handful of Truths, oh. Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. This is the most interesting category of all. This is the first yeah. one when I popped in on the live stream they were doing. I think All Quiet on the Western Front is the clear front runner here. I have not seen Bardo. I've not seen empire of light and I'm still haven't seen tar. So I'm very curious to see all of them. I do not think Elvis belongs here. Um, I'm very glad avatar did not get put here. Um, but I, to me, top gun Maverick should be in this conversation for cinematography and everything everywhere all at once should yeah. be in the conversation for cinematography. Um, some I need to see some of these to to truly put some weight behind that, but I still think All Quiet on the Western Front is the clear front runner here. 
especially with those trenches scenes. Whew. Anyway, I'll take your word. I'll take your word for it. Then, yeah, this is a list that you know. It, whenever there's a moment where we're like, "Whoa, this is crazy," it's always like one or two weird nominations. But it's like this all is five four. is in here. That's like, yeah, four or four. five where it's like. This is a heck of a list. Um, I'll just trust your judgment on All Quiet on the Western Front. I actually did think Elvis did have some really good shots oh God, in this movie. Um, <laughs> I did too, but I mean, it, yes, but I think there are better movies that did a better sure. job. Sure. Um, Empire of Light, I'm surprised, is nominated anywhere that isn't possibly Best Actress. Um yeah i don't know what to tell you about this list it's a wild list have you um, seen empire of light no no it has it, there, it hasn't expanded out to montana come on now <laughs> um i have not I seen this really movie. wanted to see it i'm i'm very excited to get a chance to see it i've been waiting a while to to see it but sure. um all right let's keep train moving here we got animated short i haven't seen any of them i'm not going to list them all off I want to watch them all. Same thing with my live action shorts, hoping to see them in the theater when they kind of release them all at once. Do you have any thoughts here? There's one that has an ostrich in it by the sounds of it. And it sounds Love it. like it's a lot of fun. So an ostrich told me the world is fake and I think I believe it. I'm in. That sounds incredible. Um, sounds like a for animated feature film, title. we have, we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro is somebody I think could have snuck in for best director. A little upset. He wasn't. Um, oh, Marcel yeah, the Shell with shoes on, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which my brother just saw and I hear is awesome. Um, the Sea Beast and Turning Red. I am a little upset Marcel the Shell with shoes on is in this category. I do not oh, really? consider it to be an animated film um, hmm. because it is it is stop motion, but it just doesn't feel to me animation whatsoever. Um, I think it deserved way more nominations than being in this. I am very glad it did get this nomination because I, it's not getting another. Um, it should have. But um, I think Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is by far winning this movie. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure anything else is close. Marcel would be my second choice there. But um, what, do you, what are your thoughts here? Uh, I think this wound up being an unsurprising list, but it's a list that I'm happy with. Um, I agree with you that for me, Pinocchio is probably the one that I would go with. Although I do wonder if the conversation around Marcel the Shell has had enough legs leading up to the winners being announced. Puss in Boots, with it being successful, I kind of wonder if any of the voters took notice and decided to give it a win. Those would just be my question marks, but... Pinocchio seems like the logical I think choice. it's the clear I think that's the one runner. they would like the most. It's also the best version of Pinocchio I have ever seen. And I love the Disney original. It is so much better. It's just beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> all right. We're getting into the big ones here. I've been waiting mm. for Kyle to see this one. Best actress in a go. supporting role. Angela Bassett for Wakanda Forever. Um, Hung Chow for The Whale. Carrie Condon for the Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Stephanie, is it who's who's? I believe it's Sue. Sue. Oh, I, it's Sue. I apologize for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Kyle and I got in a very fun and interesting conversation about both Stephanie and Jamie in Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I mm -hmm. said to him, I said, look, Kyle, they both need to be in this category. They both are better than so many other actresses I can think of. And I'm so, so, so glad they're here. Um, for Hong, I would have preferred her being nominated in the menu over her performance in The Whale. I like her in The <laughs> yeah. Whale, but I don't necessarily uh -huh. know if this was her best performance this year. I think the menu was actually better. Angela Bassett, this is the most interesting. I mean, we just a minute ago, we're talking there's no women in directors. Right now, we're only, um, uh, never mind. I don't know what I'm saying here. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. it's best actress. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. No, I was thinking something completely different. I completely lost my oh, train of okay. thought there. Um, okay. Carrie Condon for Banshees, I think, is a great pick. She was awesome in the movie. But this is the toughest category to me of, of any of them. And I do think it is a three-way fight between Jamie, Stephanie, and Angela Bassett, our queen. But what are your thoughts here? 
first off, I'm just really happy that I'm not upset this morning and that Stephanie got in for everything everywhere all at once. It seemed like it was a really steep climb for her to get this nomination. Um, and I think she is like more of the crux of the movie uh, working as well as it does compared to Jamie Lee Curtis. Although for Jamie Lee Curtis, it is great seeing her get, I believe, their first time nomination. So that's really cool to Best see. Best performance she's ever given is this movie. Yeah. Um, this is a category that um, when it comes to its nominations, I'm not complaining about one bit. I think like it's a really talented and interesting list to have of nominations. Um, the one that I am curious about is uh, the supporting actress from Triangle of Sadness. I heard a lot about Dolly. Oh, Dolly something. I'm spacing on her last name now. I thought there could be a way for her to get into this somehow, but what we got here... I'm also not complaining about, like I said, I think this is a very um, good list to have. I love it. And if correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first nomination in an actor or actress role for a Marvel movie. I do not believe anybody else has ever gotten there. We, we've had talks of, yeah, of Robert Downey being there, but I'm pretty sure Angela Bassett rightfully deserving uh, mm -hmm. in this spot is phenomenal. Um, and one of the things I said to Kyle yesterday too, is actresses or excuse me, not actually supporting roles need to elevate the main per performer, the, your, you know, your lead role, they need to elevate them and help them throughout the story in whatever story you're telling. And this might be the best five in a long time I have seen do that. Cause we always get weird ones mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah. this is a lead in supporting. Um, like Whiplash for for JK was a very great example of of a supporting actor, and I love this here. But all right, let's keep the train going. Um, actor in a supporting role, we've got Brendan Gleeson from Banshees. We've got Brian T. H Tyree Henry from Causeway. Um, <laughs> Jude Hirsch from The Fablemans. Barry, uh, how do you say his last name? Cohen? Co Kohong? Was I think it's Kogan. Kogan in Banshees and Key from Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's our our king there. I love these. I think Brian Tyree Henry is a very interesting um kind of surprise. Um yeah, that's a I, I believe a, a pleasant surprise. I um I'll have to really think about who I would would put in over him, but I think Barry and Brendan being here makes a ton of sense. I think uh Jude Hirsch makes a ton of sense, but this is keys to lose. I think he is absolutely yeah. going to win this and rightfully so what are your thoughts here uh yeah if you guys are placing bets and you want to lock right now i say go with kihi kwan he's oh, terrific yeah. in everything everywhere um brian tyree i'm so happy about this nomination i thought this was a long shot i thought no one saw this movie but um the dude's so good in that movie he just has such a quiet yet calming powerful presence that's like the best way i could describe it in this movie i don't know about judd hirsch for fablemans like the one scene he's in is very good and is integral for the movie um and for the character of sammy but i thought paul dana was better i thought paul dana was way better well, and to me i would staple in the movie i would argue that paul dano is actually a lead in in the fablemans i actually think uh, if it's gonna go to anything else it would sure. be seth rogan who I think is a a true supporting, you know, strong actor who is because the I mean sure. Paul Dano's in a lot of the movie. the The son is obviously the main who's playing Stephen, but mm -hmm. but man, I I love Jude, so I, I'm okay with him being in here. I'd have to really think of anybody else yeah. I'd put in there besides maybe Seth Rogen, but Key's gonna win it because he's he's the king. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So we're moving on to actress in a supporting role, or supporting actress in a leading role. Kate Blanchett for Tar, Ana de Armas for Blonde. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this. Andre Roseburg, Riseboro? Riseboro, Riseboro. Riseboro. I meant to say Riseboro to Leslie in the movie Two <sighs> Leslie. Michelle Williams, The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, Anna in here is was a surprise to me. Especially, it's funny because Blonde got nominated for the Razzie in every other category other than her performance. Um, I do. I've have you? Did you see Blonde? No, because I heard it was terrible. 
I saw it. Um, okay. It's it's not very good. Her performance, I think, is very good. Um, I think all the issues come from everything else, like the direction and the script. But I wouldn't put her in here over some other actresses that I have seen this year. I mean, I'm thinking of of both the girls from She Said, who I think would deserve a nod over Anna myself. I, I mean, I'm happy for Anna because I like her a lot as an actress. Um, one, but one, one big one that's missing is Danielle Deadweiler for Till. Like I've heard incredible things oh, about yeah, her. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. getting nominated everywhere. It's a surprise. I even think Jennifer Lawrence for Causeway has a chance to be in here over over this. I also think the young girl from um uh why can't I think of the movie? <sighs> we just talked about it. Can you um, describe it? But what do we what do we uh, got here? After Sun. I think the little girl from After Sun completely oh, that would be should should have been in here. I also think mm-hmm. um uh uh from Cha Cha Real Smooth, I think Dakota Johnson has a real shot to be here. That movie's phenomenal. But so this category is surprising. I do think Michelle Yeoh is the 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 front runner here. I think Michelle Williams and Kate Blanchett have a shot, but I do think Michelle Yeoh is the front runner myself. Boy, I have a lot of thoughts about this now. Okay, this category is wild to me. First off, I love Michelle Yeoh the most. I'm a little concerned about her getting the win because people are raving about Kate Blanchett and Tar. And for good reason. Kate Blanchett, despite me not loving the movie, is really freaking good in that movie. Yeah, I need to see it. Um, Michelle Williams, I'm happy to see her in Fablemans because... I thought she did great in the role. I don't think it was a miscast of Steven Spielberg's own mother. Look at a picture of Steven Spielberg's mother and watch the performance and tell me that wouldn't have been accurate. Like, <sighs> I don't know what to tell you. I thought it was very good and I thought uh, she did great. And lean role, I think, makes sense uh, for her to be nominated in this category. Ana de Armas for Blonde. I'm sure she was good in the role, but I'm shocked that they decided to give her the nomination despite everything else from what I'm hearing about the movie just being completely terrible. And as in terms with Andrea Riseboro, I weirdly was seeing like a weird campaign surrounding this actress for two Leslie. Like it was so odd. Like they had the most randomest of actors just tweeting out the same like one liner about how good this movie is and that she should get a nomination. And I guess it worked. Like, it wasn't even, like, trending on Twitter or anything. Like, it was people who would, like, pay attention to, like, these Oscar campaigns and stuff like that who had noticed that and, like, mentioned it. But no one ever, like, took it seriously. So I don't know what this means down the road for, like, future Oscar campaigns. If that's going to be, like, a new trend or something. Or maybe the movie is just that good and we just weren't hearing enough about it. Need to check it out. It's just wild to me that those two were able to get in and something like Danielle Deadweiler did not. Or or even, you know, Alex named a few. I would throw in Viola Davis. I would not have been mad to oh, see Viola yeah. Davis um, in this category. Honestly, it's more of a surprising list than cinematography. <laughs> like, those are the two weird ones to me. And I do um, want to – oh, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. No, I was just going to say we can keep going. This video is getting a little long and um, not long enough. I do want to remind the audience of how the Oscar nominations work. So the actresses are the ones who voted for this. It's the actresses of the 9000 members of the Academy in Hollywood voted for these five. Everyone votes for the for best picture, but they voted for these five. So Mm -hmm. it's a very, very interesting look at what the Academy is seeing. They just must have loved the, the women who are part of the Academy, and I'm pretty sure most of these actresses are members of the Academy. Um, why they voted for who, but... All right, actor in a yep. leading role. Austin Butler. Hi, Max. Austin Butler for Elvis. Colin Farrell for The Banshees of Inner Sheeran. Brendan Fraser for The Whale. Paul Meskel for After Sun, which I think is phenomenal being in there. And Bill Nye for Living. Um, I have not seen Living. It is also on my list. I'm excited to see it. Um... Austin Butler, I think people are really going to be saying he's 
he's a front runner between him and Brendan, I would guess, is where I'm seeing most of the awards kind of go back and forth. I do think this should go to Brendan or Colin. I do think Austin does a fine, a great job. I think if he wins it, it's great. I'm a little bit over the uh, the method acting, playing a singer trend we've had for a while, and I'm just, I'm really just <laughs> sure. bitter. Taron Egerton didn't get even a nomination for for um, playing Elton John when he's by far been the best so far. But I think those three are really uh, the big front runners. I'm really happy Paul got in here. I don't think he's got a chance to win, but I'm really, really happy he's here. But I do think Brendan Fraser and Austin are probably the main front runners. What are your thoughts? I do wonder about Colin Farrell because I um, before this week I was thinking it was also Butler and Fraser, and now I'm wondering if Colin Farrell is going to sneak in there and people give him an Oscar because he's been deserving of one for a while. I kind of wonder if that's where they'll lean towards. Um, Paul Mescal, I thought this was also going to be a long shot. I'm here for it. Love to see some love for After Sun. After Sun, excuse me. Uh, Bill Nye, he was also in the running, so it's not surprising to see him on this list. I just wonder. I can't think of off the top of my head who he might have bumped out, <clears throat> but it. This is a good list overall, though. Uh, I and I think like more than half of these, we aren't very surprised by. So. Well, this Good is list. Colin Farrell's first Academy Award nomination, so I'm not sure they feel it's a really? legacy award. Yeah, I'm not sure they feel oh, it's a legacy okay. award for him at all. I, I, I think the story around Brendan, the story around Butler, and and Colin's first nomination make for an interesting fight here. Um, sure. Brendan Fraser alone, just, I mean, the way he came back, his performance is so good. It's the only reason to see that movie. Um, but... Uh, if this is going to be interesting, Colin should have won for best supporting actor for, uh, for what's the Disney movie, the amazing Disney movie Mar- from the Mary Poppins one. Come oh, on. you're I thinking of think saving of... Mr. Banks. Yeah. He absolutely, he should have won that year. I do think this is a hard fought battle. I don't think it's like when Leo won, it was a weak year. I don't consider this a weak mm-hmm. year, but all right, let's get into the last one here. Best picture. We have 10. You have to have 10 now. So we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inner Sheeran, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. I truly believe Elvis has no business being in Best Picture. <laughs> I'm okay with every other nomination. I do not think the movie is very good. I think there are tons of movies that are better than this. Um, I think... Uh, uh, After Sun should be up here. I think Cha Cha Real Smooth should be up here. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, I think that deserves to be up here more than Elvis. I think Pinocchio deserves to be here more than Elvis. I enjoyed Elvis enough, but it is long. It has problems outside of Austin Butler. There's not much to go on. Um, Women Talking, I think, is a pleasant surprise. Top Gun Maverick is an awesome spot here. Um, the Fablemans, everything everywhere, but I do think this is between the Fablemans, everything everywhere all at once and all quiet on the Western front, I think are the three that are, that are actually fighting for a real chance to win. I think the rest are very happy to be here, but what do you think? (laughs) Oh, the whale. I think the whale is a better movie than Elvis and deserves to be here. And I don't even like Darren Aronofsky. So that's a take. Um, it's a correct take. <laughs> Pal. I just like that. There's a mixture of smaller budget stuff and, uh, commercial commercially successful stuff. So seeing avatar get in here, seeing top gun get in here, Elvis, uh, I know what you're saying about Elvis. I probably would have it taken out over something else, but I do like that. It's at least a commercially successful film that is to me good. So it does have reason to be in here. It's even okay. everything everywhere all at once did have, you know, not obviously it's not big commercial success, but it did have enough to, you know, be talked about throughout the rest of the year. So I'm happy for this just good mixture overall. Um, women talking. I think a lot of people are going to be happy that, you know, it did get a best picture nomination. It was pretty quiet besides that. And most of the other categories, Triangle of Sadness is probably a pleasant surprise for some people. 
And yeah, I'm just seeing here most of these movies I've seen, most of these movies I've at least enjoyed fairly enough or I've loved. Um, and yeah, there's always some others, in my opinion, like Woman King or After Sun that I would prefer over some of these. But I just think it's a good mixture all around. So right now, as I'm looking at this um, category, I don't have anything to criticize over, but that could probably change like the more I really sit down and think about it. But as of right now, good category, good mixture of everything. And yeah, I think that's about it for this list then. Kyle wants his indie. He wants his $2 billion movies. He That's what yeah. he wants. He wants a nice little mix. But Everyone all right, guys, what do you think? Comment below. Let us know. Remember to like, subscribe, share. And as always, thanks for watching, Mom. See you guys.